Hi, I'm Clive Stedman. I'm going to be doing a demonstration painting of a still life, uh, a glass of wine and a bottle of wine. Um, and the idea is to balance accuracy with expressiveness and create a, an evocative painting that captures uh, how someone might respond to this subject without necessarily being seduced by uh, technical accuracy um, and avoiding the uh, twin peril of uh, uh, overly expressive painting that loses the um, representational power of the subject. And this is a teaser for a course that I'll be teaching at the Penn Studio School. And I hope you find it interesting and worthwhile. So, there's my subject, and this is where I'll be painting it, and I will jigger with the set up a little, not to set up the view of the, of the subject. And actually, I'm going to start by just uh, giving you a tour of my palette. So. We start with uh, white. This is a mix of titanium and lead white. This is what I call a palette gray. This is a scraped off um, palette from the old from an old painting. Uh, this is a cad orange hue, cad lemon hue, uh, cad yellow hue, yellow ochre, cad red. Permanent Lizard Crimson. Oh, this is, uh, yeah, something I've been flirting with. This is a Thalo Blue that is kind of dangerous. I should probably not use it today. This is an Ultramarine Blue. This is a Transparent Red Oxide. And this is an Ivory Black. I probably won't be using all of those colors. And I'll leave this so that you can see at least most of my palette as I'm going. But that's what's going to be interesting. So oftentimes, if I was doing a painting of a subject like this, I would start with a pencil drawing. But I'm going to try to uh, work a little quickly for the purposes of this demo. So I'm going to dive right in with a paint painted drawing. And going to try to just establish the placement of the big shapes. And so the big shape is my bottle here, which is going to run off the top. And um, there are things that I probably should be worrying about that I'm not worried about too much, like um, accurate placement of these um, ellipses. Um, If I were trying to be more representational, um, I would spend quite a bit more time on these ellipses. But like here, roughly. Oh, and you can see I started with my bottle a little farther off, and I've moved it a bit to the right. Um, and my bottle is relatively low on the painting so that I have room for the glass, which is the star. And I'm going to place the glass here. And you can tell that I'm not being too careful about... Well, I should talk about so first of all, I'm not being too careful about the drawing. I'm going to be refining the drawing as I go. And um, I'm also going to be probably getting rid of the drawing as I go. But so uh, what I'm using here to do this knock-in of the big shapes is a mix of um, the transparent red oxide. And then I started with uh, 
ultramarine blue, but I switched almost unintentionally. To Thalo Blue. Thalo Blue is a little a little intense and sort of puts me off. Okay, I think this needs to come up a little. And unfortunately there's no audience, so I can't answer questions. So I'll just try to explain what I'm doing as I go. In a class, I would be asking for questions and responding to people as they had the questions. So, this drawing doesn't have to be too accurate because um, ironically, because accuracy is very important that the, the description of these shapes is crucial. And so um, what that means is I'm going to be refining these shapes throughout the process of the painting. So my so what that means, because I'm going to be refining, what that means is the first drawing doesn't really uh, matter because it's going to get um, better as I go. Oh, and I should talk a little bit about the sort of whys of the setup. So um, I have this on a, on a panel, uh, gessoed panel, to, to be a white uh, floor and then I've got a uh, sort of neutral yellow wall back there it's kind of awful that um, that I really should paint someday and um, so the idea is to make this a relatively light painting and that will um, help with the um, mood of the painting. So I'm, I'm trying to make a relatively light-hearted painting. Um, and so uh, so I think that there are words that we use um, when we're painting that have um, emotional connotations. Um, and some of those words are like warm and cool and light and dark. And uh, I think it's silly for us as painters not to um, take advantage of the uh, sort of emotional content of the color and value choices we make. And so um, I'm setting out to do a relatively light painting. I'm going to start by um, blocking in a yellow ochre wine here. This will change. This is just, so I want to start with what I think of as my first best guess for what I'm looking at and where it belongs. And um, this can, this will help me um, judge what my final colors are going to be. I'm not putting something down wrong on purpose, um, but I don't feel obliged to um, be too precise because um, I'm trying to establish the values, I mean the relationships on my canvas because um, the relationships, the, the colors and values that I can paint are uh, much more limited than the colors and values that are in front of me. Um, and so um, I'm going to have to uh, do the best to capture what I'm looking at with paint. And so I'm just trying to get
something down that I can um, correct as I go. And I should talk maybe a little bit about um, medium. So I'm using, I did my drawing with, uh, I, I touched my brush to some mineral spirits and um, used that to, um, to get a, a quick drawing. And you can see where it's dripping a little, but um, I'm not gonna use any more mineral spirits throughout the whole painting. So um, from here on out, I'm just using paint. And I think maybe this is a little too blue. So I'm gonna add some of this transparent red oxide to knock the green down a little. Okay, and then I've got a background, kind of comes like this. Well, actually it comes like this and then comes down. And the uh, refraction that's happening to that background through the glass is going to be crucial to um, helping me create the illusion that I'm looking at glass. And that's going to be uh, probably the uh, largest issue in this painting. Okay, and so now I'm going to find a light neutral background for this wall. And I'm using a palette gray. Oh yeah, you can't see this unfortunately here. Let me move this over. So this is some of this, that palette gray that I've got over there to the left mixed with yellow ochre and uh, white to create a kind of neutral background. And okay, so uh, let me just talk about glass for a little bit. So the most important thing about glass from a artistic point of view, an aesthetic point of view, is that it's fundamentally not really there. So um, the wine bottle will be different. Here, let me get a little better handle on the shape of that wine bottle. The wine bottle is a little different because it's dark, so it, so it actually has a, a kind of visual presence. But the wine glass doesn't. It is almost entirely transparent. So um, I'm going to just paint through my drawing and um, I'll reestablish it when I get to it as I need. Okay. And now a lighter neutral practically white. Oh, I should move this over so that you can see it. So I'm using, this is a little bit of the palette gray and I'm going to mix it with a quite a bit of white. And just dropping in quite a bit. And you can see that um, those old marks that I make don't really bother me. Um, I can go over them. Oh, actually, I've got a gradation. I've got, um, here, let me show you. It's much lighter here than it is over there. So, um, so the light is fading away, so I should make this a little darker. I can make this a little lighter. And uh, let's see, correcting the drawing a little, correcting the drawing, and the glass is transparent. I think maybe I don't want to go too light here because I want some room f 
for highlights in lighter places. So I'm going to get a little darker for the lightest light on the table. On the tabletop. And hopefully this, well, I, could, I should maybe get even a little darker so I have room for highlights. And I'm going to move the glass over a little bit. So it's behind that bottle there. And I'm going to just go entirely over my drawing. And let's see, now get a little bit darker as I come over close to the bottle. A little bit darker. And then darker over here. And then shadow. Shadow is even darker. This is again some of that palette gray. And I got a shadow from the stem of the glass. Oh, and I could get a touch darker for the label of the bottle, which is white. Yeah, I think the bottle needs to be a little fatter. So, bring it over a little. So this is what I meant. I'm constantly adjusting correcting my first best guess. Yeah. And now I'm having problems with the shape of the bottle. So this is this is where if I'd spent a little bit of time in the beginning with uh, maybe a pencil drawing I wouldn't be suffering these problems now. So let that be a lesson. You should profit from my mistakes. So let's see, this is going to move over. This is going to move over a little bit, move over. And then the bottom of the bottle. Quite dark. Oh, so I've got this dark back here of the label seen through the bottle, which I'm going to take advantage of. And then that color, that value is pretty much what I see for the bottom of the bottle. Oops, there's still some mineral spirits left there, so my paint's getting a little slippery. Okay, something like this. Just a first guess. This is a block in, really kind of rough. And, you know, before I call this done, I'm going to. Get something for. Oh, does this go out that far? I don't think it goes out that far. Something for the base of the glass. Top of the glass comes out to here. Yeah, I didn't place that wall very well. I didn't place this uh, dark. This, this is actually the shadow that my panel doesn't actually go all the way to the wall. So that's a shadow behind my panel. I did not place it very well. So let's see if I can get a little better. Oh, I don't want to go to black there. Get a little lighter. Something like that. And then this is just 
the tabletop seen through the glass and it's a little darker because the glass is not completely transparent but this really is just tabletop Okay, so, oh, I should put in the label here, right? This is what I would call, and the label is my latest light. So this is what I would call a block-in. And it's just an approximation sort of first guess like I was telling you of what I'm seeing and now now I'm going to do what I think of as uh, the Karate Kid method of painting which is um, that was sort of the wax on part and now I'm going to do the wax off and uh, just kind of move things around get rid of edges So, um, yeah, so I'm mostly trying to stay in, uh, broadly speaking, um, color and value families as I'm doing this. So, um, but um, I'm also just losing edges. So remember what I told you about this being a process of refinement. Um, that's going to start pretty soon. And um, And the drawing is both crucially important and something that's going to get better in the course of the painting. So, what I want to point out is that while the painting is very much different it's not really destroyed the fundamental the big shapes are still here and so um so now i can go back and with more uh care and attention and, and sort of the the um uh, profit that i've gained from looking at this for for the last 20 some minutes um I can be more accurate where I need to be more accurate. And I can be really intentional about my placement of edges it's because now all my edges are soft. So I can go in and put in um, harder edges where I think that's appropriate. So this is gonna be kind of a dance where um, I kind of spend some time Putting the paint down relatively carefully, mostly with a brush. And then back off and get to the um, integrity of the big shapes. Because the big shapes are going to do most of the work. Okay, so that's the uh, label bit, and then and then there are bits where here. Let me show you the subject again. There are bits like right in here where the glass is darker, where the glass is darker, and then there are bits in here where the glass is lighter, and so. Um, I'm going to try to capture some of that. With, say, dark, some of this value. 
crawling up the edge of the glass. all right okay now uh, let me look at the wine glass not the bottle so I'm just gonna start by um, getting rid of most of this there we go and now now I'll put in you know I've been doing this with a relatively large brush, a uh, number four, and I think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. This is a number two, an extra long filbert. Uh, I forget what they call it. It's some, like, uh, I think it's sometimes called an Egbert or uh, something like that. And uh, try to capture some of the smaller shapes so like the rim of the glass here dark right there in the class I'll talk more about um, ellipses and how to paint them accurately which I'm not worrying too much about now but one thing I am worried about is sort of the, the first problem with ellipses, and that is what I call the football problem, and that is where you make an ellipse that looks like that. And it looks more like a football than an ellipse. An ellipse is never pointed in the corners. So, um, so I'm going to make sure not to do that. So that's why this is almost straight a vertical line straight up and down there at the what you might call the corner of the ellipse and then this is its mirror over there on that side there we go and it's a little dark coming down the start of the glass okay and I want to make sure that I've lost edges in here because remember fundamentally glass is mostly not there so I want to make sure that I don't lose that and now let me put in some wine and the wine is dark at the edges so I'm gonna hit my yellow ochre with some transparent red oxide and then this actually that dark bit kind of horseshoes all the way around the edge of the glass the edge of the top of the wine and then comes down the side Okay. And then I get lighter, more transparent as I get into the wine. So I'm mixing in some of the cadmiums, cadmium lemon with the uh, yellow ochre. And then a little more yellowy as I come down the side of the glass. There we go. And I'm saving some lights. And then actually. So there are some dark darks in the wine, places where I think I'm seeing some refracted bits of the bottle 
in the wine itself. Something like that. But then most importantly at the base of the glass and then where that hits the I'm sorry, the base of the kind of belly of the glass, and then the, the base of the glass itself, I get relatively dark. Shadows and refractions. Okay. I think that might be enough for the base for the moment at least. It's a little lighter, sort of at the top of, of the, the where the stem leaves the base of the glass, and I see some of these kind of here. I think I want to. Um, make the rim of the glass a little. A little more narrow. So, okay. And the neck of the bottle, a little more narrow. Lose some edges. Like I say, this is a dance. Lose some edges. some edges. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to... I've got a stem here, which um, I'm going to probably mostly not paint, but I don't want to destroy it. Okay. So... Let's go back and kind of the rim of the glass is not as wide as the belly. I'm going to lose some edges there too. Well, yeah. Oops. I want to make sure that's. This is almost the lightest part of that tabletop. There we go. Okay. So the rim is, yeah, so let me show you. So the belly of the glass kind of bows out a little and then comes in. And I wasn't feeling like I ca caught this angle, which kind of comes in like that, in like that, something like that. And um, so that's the correction I was looking for. So that's the downward part. It's the top lip of the glass. Again, the glass is not all here. So I'm not going to paint that whole top rim. Is that enough? No, I probably need a little more. Something like that. Okay. And actually, yeah, I'm going to work a little bit on the base of the glass starts above the bottle. So I'm going to move this all up. 
always correcting the drawing. Yeah. I'm actually going to have this stem lower. than it is in real life. Whatever. Don't tell on me. Let's see. Okay, now I'm going to go back and try to reestablish the boundary of the tabletop and the wall. Okay, I think that helps. And then, um, actually, this comes up. This bit where I see the tabletop through the glass comes up like so. There we go. And then the wall. likewise comes down into the glass. This is refraction and this um, will help with the illusion that that's a glass. Okay, and now I'm going to spend some time on the label. There's a line And then there's some writing right here. This is a Chloe Chardonnay, but I don't think anybody really cares too much. Sonoma County, California. This is a reasonably old wine, 2015. And then there's a little bit of yellow, which kind of, kind of gold, a little bit that helps sort of make it look sophisticated. Sophistication is a good thing. Okay, now let me uh, see if I can't get a little more wineish in the glass. And so I'm going to start cheating with some cadmium orange, which I don't really see much in the wine. Here, let me just show you. So I think I see a little bit of orange in here and maybe kind of right in here as we transition from the uh, dark refraction to the light. And then I'm gonna save these highlights for later. And, uh, See what I can do. A little bit of orange. And I'm building up some paint now. This is relatively impasto. Okay. And then we'll get back to yellows. More yellows. darker yellows down in the below the surface of the line kind of right there okay and that's maybe a little too much brush strokiness so let's lose some and especially this top back should be a little transparent go. Kind of a little transparent. Lose some edges. Lose some edges. Okay. That was my 
Big brush again, making a return. Now I'll go back to the small brush. And I actually think I'm um, winding down. So um, I'm gonna start hitting highlights. So I see a nice big highlight here in the bottle. Highlight here, and then kind of yellowy highlight here and here. A kind of orangey highlight right here. But then a white highlight on the back of the glass and on the front of the glass and then kind of a light bit of the rim and then some highlights in the base of the glass say right here in the stem and then a little lower and then right here and then a little bit kind of secondary not quite that light back there and I kind of feel like this line should come all the way through right so kind of like that and maybe I can lose it a little there we go so this is a loose painting of a wine bottle and a glass of wine that hopefully captures some of the feeling of a glass of wine. I don't like the way this lines up is right there. Let's lose a little bit of that. Let's lose some on the edge of there. And uh, I'll be teaching about this in probably more depth, with longer demos, in a little bit, for the Penn Studio School. Thanks for watching.